You're listening to the Craig Proctor Real Estate Show. Each week, I'm going to be interviewing top realtors from coast to coast to give you a backstage pass on how they've created their amazing real estate empires and how you can copy them. Hi, everyone. This is real estate coach Craig Proctor, and welcome to the Craig Proctor Real Estate Show. One of my favorite members today, uh, Mike Zaku, who operates in two states, actually, operates in the great state of California and arguably the greater state of Tennessee. Uh, Mike, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Craig. Really appreciate it. Uh, so you've been a member for a long, long time. We're going to talk about the ways that you set yourself apart uh, in this changing market. No doubt, uh, a lot of real estate agents are on their heels. Uh, many of them, uh, Mike, have never experienced a market like this. People are freaking out because interest rates are 6 or 7% which uh, is actually less than the 30-year historical um, average. Uh, but people are freaking out uh, because it's a big change. I mean, the rates were at zero a couple of years ago. So uh, we'll talk about some of those challenges. Talk about how to differentiate yourself. Um, what we all need to understand is we have to learn how to have a business that does not depend on the economy or the marketplace. You have to insulate yourself from the ups and downs in the market if you want to do this for a long time and you want to be successful. And Mike, uh, many of our members actually have some of their best years ever in down markets where agents are leaving the industry in droves and they're suffering and they're complaining. And uh, I think we would all agree that it's um, you know really important now who the buyer and seller chooses uh, to buy and sell with where you know maybe a couple of years ago, Home sellers thought, well, anybody could sell my house. You know, that's the the market we're in. So things have changed. Um, that's uh, we we know we're going to have ups and downs as we we move forward in real estate. I've been doing this for thirty years. Many of you know my story. Uh, I started in real estate uh, with no money. Um, I had never sold anything in my life. I knew nothing about marketing and advertising, and uh, I was pretty much a massive failure in the first year because I just looked around what everyone else was doing and I copied it, which is kind of what we do. So that meant door knocking, cold calling, sitting in open houses, chasing expireds for sale by owners, getting phones hung up, doors slammed in my face. And um, my issue was I had nowhere else to go. So I had to figure out how to make real estate work. I'd already dropped out of college and university, which my parents paid for all that. And uh, they were kind of done paying for those types of things. The reason I got into real estate, as you know, Mike, is my dad was a real estate agent. Even my father, who loves me and wanted me to succeed, even my dad said, don't do it. What chance do you have? Um, you don't really stick with anything. But I did the opposite of what dad, had, uh, dad told me to do. Got into real estate. Within three years, something magically happened. I became the number one REMAX agent in the world. So that's what uh, I've been working with Mike now for a decade, figuring out... Um, um, how to transfer uh, my system uh, to him. And he's done a really good job of being a student and an implementer. And this is the important thing I want everyone to take away from this. What we're talking about today has nothing to do with me. It's about this system that any of us can use uh, to uh, transform you know, your real estate job uh, into a, a thriving business. So Mike, Tell us a little bit about how you got involved with Craig Proctor and all the magic that's happened since. Sure. So I uh, heard about a half day seminar that James McDonald was doing in 2011. Uh, I went to that. That was in California at the time. I serve Ventura County, just north of Los Angeles County. He was having one in Thousand Oaks, so just down the road. Went to that. I said, well, this is something different. I had been through other coaching programs, uh, had passed kind of through a couple of different brokerages by that point. I'd gotten licensed in 2004. So I was about seven years into it. I was having some success, uh, but I was looking for more, looking to actual, actually build a business rather than everything relying on me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly what James was talking about. Went to one of your uh, live events down in Anaheim in 2011, joined up right away. Uh, I saw the value instantly. Um, one in having people pursuing me rather than me pursuing them, getting warm leads rather than, you know, door knocking, cold calling, all the things I was being taught at other brokerages. Um, and then just your USPs and, and your, your benefit rich messages that were getting put out there to the marketplace. 
uh, really had me very interested right away. I mean, day one, I was just like, okay, I'm in. What do I got to do now? And I've been full steam ahead for the last 12 years with you. Um, and each and every year, just learn more, understand things more deeply. Uh, you know, the market shifts. So sometimes some things will be really relevant. Sometimes things will be a little less relevant, but you're always on point to tell us kind of uh, refocus on, hey, this is probably going to work in this market right now. Um, and I'm excited to talk about some of those things that are working right now, which, like you said, two, three years ago, weren't so relevant uh, because anyone could sell a house. Uh, now sellers are much more discerning in who they're going to pick uh, to for the very important job of getting their home sold. Right. And you have some great programs that help them with that. Uh, but throughout the journey, I went from being a solo agent, having a transaction coordinator, kind of having a buyer's agent to having a full team. Um, in 2018, I was able to really test stress test my business. Uh, I was living in Ventura, California at the time, moved 5,000 miles away with my wife and four awesome kids to Sligo, Ireland, uh, ran my business from 5,000 miles away, eight hour time difference. Uh, my business not only survived, it thrived while I was gone. So the business didn't depend on me because I couldn't take buyer appointments. I couldn't take seller appointments. I was physically not there. I did not come back for 11 and a half months to California until we moved back. It was a one-year deal. I talked my wife into going for one year. Uh, it was the one of the best years we've ever had as a family. Um, and also as a business, I got to, like I said, really stress test it. Um, then in, two, in 2021, uh, California just wasn't the place for, for me and my family at that point. And we decided to make the leap and move to Nashville, Tennessee area. We're in Nolensville. Uh, that's where I'm sitting right now. It's just about 20, 20 miles south of Nashville. And, you know, without the Craig Proctor system, without a plan, without being able to duplicate my business in California, uh, you know, there's no way I could do that. Um, when I moved to Ireland, people, the local agents, the local brokers, uh, even family members thought I was insane. They said, there's no way you're going to pull this off. And I said, oh, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to be no problem. Um, and then the same thing happened when we decided to move to Tennessee. There was all the naysayers, right, came out of the woodwork and said, I don't know how you're going to do this. You don't know anyone. And we didn't. We didn't know a living soul here, right? And we moved. And because of the systems, because of the business plan you have, because of all the benefit rich uh, programs you offer, you know, it took just a little bit of time to set up three to four months. And then we're off and rolling. And we've been here for 18 months and we're serving the whole middle Tennessee community and, and uh, having great success and still maintaining the California office as well. Okay. Did everyone get that? What Mike just said, he's got a real business. That means it doesn't involve him anymore. He kind of supervises it. He can be anywhere in the world he wants. How many real estate agents have a business like that where buyers are being shown homes and listings are taken and things are happening um, and you could be anywhere in the world. Uh, most real estate agents can't even go on a vacation. If they do want, uh, go on a vacation, Mike, it just means they bring their laptop and their cell phone and they're just doing work in a different location. They're not actually stepping away from their business because it ain't a business, it's a job. So this is what we teach agents to do is to become really, really successful First, as a solo agent, just like Mike and I, we started, there was no team, it was just Mike and I. Um, and then eventually, uh, you create an overflow of business, you put the systems in place. Um, so you end up really, the systems and the people uh, take the work off of you, okay? So you get to be the owner of the business, okay? You get to watch the machine run. And uh, because it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't take your constant involvement, because it doesn't depend on you, uh, you can be anywhere. And that's your whole idea, right? For us, when we get into real estate, most of us anyway, we think, well, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to get rid of the boss. I'm going to get into real estate. I'm going to make all this money. Uh, I'm going to have all this free time. And that's the problem. Um, very few agents make a lot of money, number one problem. Number two problem, for the few that make good money, they trade their life for their business, meaning they work 12 days, uh, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. They're married to this thing. They can't get away from it. Um, Mike has four kids and a wife, and he like would like to be with them and enjoy them growing up. And that was one of the driving forces uh, with Mike is, is yeah, I want to be successful, but not at the price, not the cost of my, my life and my family and my health and all the things that people give up to real estate. Now, I have um, hundreds of mics in the Craig Proctor system. In fact, we're all getting together 
in Orlando, Florida in a couple of weeks. It'd be like 400 of us uh, together at this event. And uh, they become best friends. They exchange ideas. Um, everywhere that you want to go in real estate, Craig Proctor members have been there. They're there now, okay? Everything you want to do in real estate has already been done by them. So um, it's a great network. Uh, we hope uh, that those of you watching it will be inspired by this today. And, um, you know, we don't want this to be like a big sales pitch for Craig Proctor, uh, but we will give you our contact information at the end. If you're interested, of course, you want to reach out to Mike and I. So um, I want to step back a minute. And Mike, you mentioned something called USPs. And uh, for a lot of our viewers, they might not know what a USP is. Uh, they might confuse that with a UPS. And by the way, I think those guys just got a massive raise, didn't they? The UPS drivers, I like, think they're making like 170 US. Yeah. Uh, so uh, good for them. But we're not talking about UPS, the, uh, uh, the the courier guys. We're talking about USP, which stands for Unique Selling Proposition. Okay, so if you're going to write something down, this is the thing to write down, is what is your USP? What is your Unique Selling Proposition? And your unique selling proposition is basically the reason why, or the reasons, plural, that a buyer or seller would choose to do business with you versus all other options. So a seller, for example, has options, right? They could One option is they could decide not to sell their home. They could decide to sell it by themselves, right? Uh, they could uh, decide to list it with you or anyone you compete with. So if a homeowner was to say, hey, I'm going to interview a bunch of agents. Why should I choose you versus all the other agents? Typically in real estate, this is what we hear. Um, uh, I really work hard. I've lived here in the community for 17 years. I'm honest. I'm a great negotiator. And everybody's saying the same thing. We want to give you examples of things that work much better. This is the reason why there was one USP. Your home sold or I'll buy it, guaranteed. That one USP took me from a struggling agent in year one to the number one REMAX agent, not in the country, in the entire world for commissions earned. Remember, had no money, never sold anything in my life, knew nothing about marketing until I did. I knew nothing about marketing until I did. I got made a decision that I need to get coached up on marketing because truly we are in the marketing business first. You know, uh, it's funny, Mike, right? When we uh, take our real estate license, what we believe in the beginning is like like what Mike believes. Hey, you know, if I'm a good agent and I'm honest and I really care about my clients and I work hard, that should be enough. People will seek me out. Well, unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of agents that work hard and are good people and care about their clients and have integrity that are failing. They're struggling in this business because nobody knows who they are or what makes them different or better. So that's what your USP is. It's, it's how what you're going to promote, the words that come out of your mouth, how you're going to promote yourself. So people pay attention and go, oh, uh, this real estate agent's different. They got something going on. There's something here that they're offering that I want. Uh, and I'm going to call them to find out how it works. So Mike, let's give um, our audience some examples of some of these unique selling propositions that you incorporate. Yeah. So the thing I love about your unique selling propositions are they're benefit rich to the consumer. So either the seller or the buyer, right? I mean, some other people have unique selling propositions or what they think are unique selling propositions of like they play golf and they have like golf clubs or they surf or these other things or they have a dog. It's like that's not really making you unique um, because every single person in the world is walking around with their own personal radio station in their head, right? We FM what's in it for me. And they, as they see a dog or they see a surfboard or something else that doesn't really speak to them. Uh, but your USPs really speak to the consumer, puts their needs above and beyond everyone else's. And they go, wait a minute, this is something that's interesting. So uh, you touched on, you know, the one that kind of started everything for you of your home sold guaranteed or we'll buy it, right? Like that's a pretty big USP that people go, wait a minute, how does that work? That gives me certainty, which as a seller, that's the number one thing I want is certainty. So Mike saying that my home's either going to sell or Mike's going to buy it. Um, the other guys down the street aren't saying that. Actually, no one else in the marketplace is saying that. Like, I'm going to call him and at least have a conversation with him first to see how that works, because uh, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm not looking to list my house. I'm not looking for the process of listing my house, showing it all these extra things. Like, I just want my home sold. And Mike's guaranteeing 
that it'll sell or he'll buy it. Uh, and, and we're definitely it. seeing that with all the iBuyer companies, the cash offers like Google real estate in your city. And the first ads that come up on Google are uh, cash offers. We'll buy your home. So this is, you know, instant gratification. It's what people want. It's the reason why, um, Mike, it's the reason why last night um, I paid, uh, I don't know, $30 for a sub and I could have drove down to Subway and bought it for eight bucks. It's convenience, right? Um, so we're offering an insurance policy uh, to homeowners that if they move up and they buy another home, they won't get stuck owning two house, houses. Of course, the other option is the seller could sell first, but because of a lack of inventory, the home so the homeowners are kind of freaked out. They're like, well, if I sell my house first and I don't find one in time, now what? Now I'm homeless. So we're offering big solutions to buyers and sellers, but here's the key, solutions they really want. Now, some of you may be judging this guaranteed sale program right now. So um, before we judge it and we get into what you might be thinking, which is, oh my God, I could never do that. I get stuck owning all these houses. That is not true if you understand how we're doing this. Some of you might think this is a bait and switch. Some of you might think we're ripping off the homeowners or whatever. None of that's true. It Just be open to how this really, really works. I sold over 10,000 homes, okay? Many homes that I sold, I offered guarantees. That didn't mean I necessarily had to buy the property because the way it works is Mike and I would give a seller an upfront guarantee that they agreed to. So it's it, there's no shenanigans going on where you know their home is worth a million dollars and we buy it for 70 cents on the dollar. It's not like that at all. We give the seller a reasonable upfront. Now we're not gonna pay full market value because you know obviously if we did that, Everyone in Tennessee would just call Mike and he'd have to buy everyone's houses, but it's a fair offer. See, it's not explained in a way that, hey, uh, the best offer you're going to get is to sell to Mike. It's explained this way. We're offering you an insurance policy that no other real estate agent will offer you. If you move up and you buy any home using our services, we'll guarantee that you won't get stuck with two homes. Now, we're going to give you an upfront. Before we go into this, you'll know exactly what we're going to guarantee in writing. So it's at a price acceptable to you. If it's not acceptable to them, obviously we don't go forward with the guarantee. Then here's where it gets better for the homeowner. Mike markets their home for 120 days because he doesn't want to buy it. He wants to sell it to an outside buyer for full market value. Um, and that's how this rolls. So we, you, you would very rarely end up buying a home. If you do buy a home, it means you screwed up. And you guaranteed the house for too much money. You told them you thought it was worth more. Now, that happened to me twice. Uh, the first time I had to buy a house, it was in downtown Toronto, where I'd never sold a house in downtown Toronto. Mistake number one. Mistake number two, I never bothered looking at the house. I figured, well, I never sold a house down there. What's the What's Why go look at it? Because I don't know what I'm doing. I made the mistake of taking somebody else's word, a person that worked with me, um, that operated down there. I took, I trusted him and I took, I bought that house for too much money. We couldn't sell it. So I did, I ended up buying a house in uh, twice in 30 years. Here's what we want to think about though. I made millions of dollars from this. So I made all this money and it cost me this much money. So that means I'm still up that amount. It's, it's a very good guarantee. Now you need to be coached up on how to do this. There's conditions, there's, um, there's automatic price reductions. There's um, specific things that we would teach you. So this would be something you'd feel comfortable offering. In fact, uh, uh, Mike, the first time I did this, I didn't have any money, uh, but I did own a house. So what I did is I went to the bank and I got a line of credit secured with my home just in case I had to buy a house. And the down payment is uh, sort of built into this anyway, just for some quick math. And if you understand math, you'll understand how this works. So let's say Mike's got somebody with a million dollar home and they wanna buy a $2 million home. Well, Mike's going to double end the $2 million home because that's the condition. They can't use Uncle Joe or their friend to get the guarantee. They have to move up and buy um, Mike's listing uh, directly through Mike. So Mike is going to double end that $2 million home. Now, maybe if you don't have $2 million homes, just say million dollar homes. But you know what I'm saying? It's a, you're getting both ends. It's a big commission check. If worse come to worse and the move up home didn't sell, okay, the person that was buying the, the more expensive home, their home didn't sell, uh, that big commission whatever it would be on $2 million at six points would be 120 grand. That's your down payment. You've already got a built-in downstroke here. So you don't actually need any money. We coach you up on how to use this. This is just the guarantee that works absolutely the best because it's what the clients want. So you might be thinking, I don't like it. 
I think it, it doesn't matter what you like. You have to get over that and you have to get coached up on what it is that buyers and sellers want. Because if you don't offer it and Mike's in your marketplace and he offers it, they just call you. That's all. It's going to call him. And you can sit there and say, be mad and whatever. But uh, you got to get coached up on what people want. Now, Mike's going to give us a couple of other examples that seem less scary. Okay. So when, uh, I mean, we're not new with this, right, Mike? So we know every time that we mention guaranteed sale program, everybody uh, kind of freaks out, get their feathers up. Uh, I can't do that. Um, they worry about all the, we, this is what we do. We have hundreds and hundreds of agents all over the country making really strong guarantees to buyers and sellers. So you may have noticed this is a great way to set yourself apart from other agents, to make guarantees that they won't make. Here's what other agents, here's their guarantee, Mike. I guarantee that your home will sell in 90 days or it expires. That's their guarantee. There's no guarantee. Um, the word guarantee is overused in real estate. I guarantee great service. Well, what if you don't provide me great service? Well, too bad, right? I guarantee to sell your home fast. I guarantee to sell your home for the most amount of money. Okay. None of this has any teeth. It doesn't work. Everyone's saying it. Mike comes along and he says, your home sold at a price acceptable to you. Boom. Or we'll buy the thing. Okay. Now people are calling him all the time. Hey, how does that work? Would that be helpful to everyone watching this? If you had a whole bunch of people week in and week out calling you saying, how does this thing work? First thing Mike says is, are you thinking of selling? Yeah. But what would you buy my home for? Mike says, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. When can I look at it? Boom. Now he's at the kitchen table. Sometimes the clients qualify for the guarantee and sometimes they don't. If they don't, we just list the house the normal way. Okay. Uh, that's what marketing is about. So uh, Mike, let's go over to you and talk about some of the other unique selling propositions that may appear a little bit less scary for our audience. Sure. Yeah. I just want to touch on two things before we jump off of this one. So Bill Watson said it, uh, yesterday, which is another longtime member of the Craig Proctor family, he said, uh, customers don't always do what they call about, right? So having this unique selling proposition out there and saying, hey, we'll buy your home if it doesn't sell, it just gets people to call. Now, not everyone's going to opt in for that guaranteed sale program. That's fine. But like you said, I'm sitting at their kitchen table having a good discussion and I have all sorts of other stuff I can offer them as well. And then I'm still able to service them. So that's just something for the people who are like, I don't know, this kind of freaks me out is not everyone really wants to go through with this uh, USP, right? Like you just, but you're there talking to them and you're able to help them with other services you provide. Well, I've got a good analogy for that, Mike. Sure. Um, okay, so when agents say, well, that's kind of a bait and switch. I mean, you're offering this and some of the people that call you don't follow through or they don't qualify for the guarantee. And I said, that's correct. But every real estate agent in the country who advertises their listings I could accuse all of them of bait and switch, right? Because here's how it works. We all have been in real estate long enough to know that when you get ad calls or sign calls, quite often the, the buyer that's calling you doesn't end up buying that property. What do you do? Do you just hang up and, oh, I, I, oh I'm looking for a four bedroom. It's only a three bedroom. You let them hang up. No, you don't. Here's what you've been taught to do. You say, oh, you're looking at, this is a three bedroom. You're looking for a four bedroom. Great. And then you would proceed to tell the buyer about homes that would match their criteria. So you baited the buyer with your listing, you found out it wasn't for them, and then you switched them onto another house that you tried to sell them, which is usually not even one of your listings. So I could argue that every real estate agent in the country is guilty of bait and switch. How about this? How about we understand that's what marketing is about? Marketing is about offering bait to get buyers and sellers to contact you. It just so happens that our bait what Mike's talking about today is much better than the bait that you're using, right? So um, how else can you explain me? How do I go from as dumb a pile of rocks, never sold anything, had no money, no confidence, to becoming the number one REMAX agent in the entire world for commissions earned within 36 months of having my license? I just, uh, was I a better agent? Uh, not at all, of course not. Didn't even know what I was doing, right? Only had my license for 36 months. I was a better marketer. I created a perception in my marketplace that when you want to sell your house, Craig Proctor is the person to call. If he doesn't sell it, he'll buy it. And all these other unique offers that you're going to learn about today. Um, so, Mike, are we done with the guaranteed sale? You want to move to yeah, a, 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 a different Yeah, USP? just the other thing. As we go through these, I think 
Um, the people I've been around, one thing that's great about, again, the Craig Proctor family and everyone that's that's part of that is you are the sum of the five people you hang around with the most, right? You're the collective mindset of the people you're around. And the great thing about you and all the people you've uh, attracted to you is we, we think like, how can we rather than you can't? So I know some people right now are thinking, well, I can't do that in my marketplace. I can't do that with my broker. I, I can't do that because of this regulation. I can't do that in this state. It's like people are doing this in every single state in America, plus Canada, right? Well, so well that, that's what lets people under- off the hook, right? That's what lets people off the hook. Um, right. Well, I, um, you know, don't focus on why you can't do something, right? right? Oh, I could never do that. That's illegal. We're not allowed. The interest rates are high. Joe Biden, whatever your issue is, right? You've got to move forward and focus on why you can do something instead of all the reasons why it won't. Right. What exactly. Mike said is true. We have We have thousands of agents doing this. Uh, look at all the top agents that are doing it. Look at all the iBuyer companies are uh, providing cash offers, instant offers. Why are they doing that? Why is there Uber Eats? This is what people want. They want convenience. They want assurances. It is the easiest way to set yourself apart from other agents instead of saying, we care, we heart refer- referrals, spouses selling houses, and all the other nonsense that you know we're, we're, we're taught. And by the way, Here's the question. How many homes are you selling? Right. You can defend, you can defend it all you want, but how many homes are you selling? Yeah. Right. Can you go move to Ireland for a year and crank out hundreds of transactions? Could you be sitting in Nashville, Tennessee and have a business also successful over in California? Right now, Mike could be in Ireland and have the business in Nashville and over in California working. Doesn't sure. matter where he is because he is not his business. He runs the business and he's created enough overflow of buyers and sellers uh, that he couldn't go out on all the appointments anyway. Now, a lot of you might be skeptical about that, right? Like, oh, how could that happen? Well, um, that's what happened to me Uh, in the beginning because I had no money and I had an overflow of listings, people wanting to list and buy through me. I did the normal thing which is I tried to do it all by myself. Now, remember when I started real estate, I was in my late twenties, I wasn't married, I didn't have any kids. So I could kind of do this. I got up to 155 homes by myself, uh, working seven days a week, uh, but I'm getting tired, right? And I'm realizing this is not a scalable thing and I can do the sprint, but I probably can't do the marathon. So uh, I met an agent uh, at an offer presentation who was brand new in real estate. I was pretty new in real estate. And I said to her, would you be willing to work the overflow? And I gave her first the buyers and I gave her sellers. And pretty soon I realized I could teach her how to do what I do. And as soon as she got the same results that I was getting, I was free. And I hired another agent, another agent, another agent. And that's exactly what Mike did. And uh, so I brought the team concept into real estate 30 years ago. There were no teams. There were no teams. Nobody had outside sales agents, inside sales agents. I also brought disc personality in the business. Nobody had a new personal uh, no, profiling and personalities and who I should hire and what position. So we pioneered all of this stuff. That's what Mike plugged himself into. Now, if you are in Nashville, or you're in uh, California, Mark's, uh, in Mike's uh, marketplaces, and he's going to tell you exactly where he operates. Here's a recommendation. You should reach out and have a conversation with Mike. Okay. Uh, don't be skeptical. Uh, don't think about what's wrong with this. Think about what's right with this. Okay. All good things start with a conversation. If Mike hadn't have come to my first conference, the first half day, it was a free seminar. He wouldn't be here today, 12 years later. He wouldn't have all this success. Well, that's true for all of you. You are here for a reason. We're about 30 minutes into this interview. And if you're still watching it, it means, okay, you're interested. You might be skeptical. That's cool. It's you know good to get all the details and the facts, but the best way to uh, get your questions answered and to determine this is real and to determine whether this is for you is to contact Mike or myself. Now, if you're in Mike's marketplace, you're going to contact him. If you don't operate, because you're going to part want to partner up with him in, in some way. If you are not in Mike's marketplace, okay, and you're in some other part of the, the country, and you're interested in how Mike did this, you'd like to be my next Mike, uh, then you're going to book a call with my team. And to book a call with my team, we do it over Zoom, be about 40 minutes long. We would ask you a whole bunch of questions about your business, what you do, why you do it that way, what the results are, what your goals are. 
and then we would teach you for free. Um, here's a few good ideas. Now, if you try our ideas and they really work for you and you like it, you're probably going to want to get more and you might want to get coached up. To book a time with me, free, zero dollars, okay, with my team and I, not me, but my team, you go to proctorcall.com. So my name, Proctor, O-R at the end, not E-R, Proctor, call, no space, proctorcall.com. You go to my QD day, Tom, or pick a, a day and a time that works for you. And uh, we'll do this free breakthrough call, we call it. Now, Mike, let's get over to some of the other unique selling propositions you offer. Sure. Sounds good. I Sorry, one more thing I just want to add, because you're, you're saying some really good gold nuggets here. I want to make sure people are picking up on this. You know, the thing that really attracted me, me to you and, and your system and everything you have to offer is what you touched on a little bit ago that I do have four kids. I have a, a wife and like I was sacrificing my family for my business because I didn't have a business. It was all based on me. And I was trading my time for money and that was sustainable for a while, but I started missing. And, and really what clicked in is when my oldest son turned to my, my, my next son was born. And when he about turned one, so I had a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And I'm just like, I, I don't think I've really kind of been a part of this whole thing. Like three years has just gone by and what, yeah, we have some money to show for it, but like, I don't get that time back. And you know what you start getting people to think about what's your exit strategy. Now, I really want people to think about this right now. Like what's your exit strategy? Are you just going to sell homes until you die one day? That's some people's exit strategy. Are you going to sell homes until you have enough money and you set aside enough in your investments that you're, you're just going to retire, hopefully. Um, but we know, unfortunately, Craig, that in the real estate industry, most people don't have any exit strategy. They're just looking at like, I'm going to sell a house this month and then I'm going to sell a house the next month and I'm going to try to do as much as possible. And it's just, you know, one year at a time. It's like you get get people thinking a little bit bigger and a little bit farther out there of like, OK, where do I want to take this whole thing? And I like to use a sports analogy. We both like hockey, so I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, you know, at first you're a player, right? So that's where we were. We were just players on the field or on the ice, making making plays, right? And then you become the captain. You do a good job, become the become the captain. You have some influence other over the rest of the team, but it's still kind of you're just doing your thing. Then maybe you become a player coach, right? If there's no official coach, you're the coach, and you're trying to you're trying to skate with the players as well, right? Then you become the the actual coach, and then you're just only coaching. You're no longer on the ice. You're coaching because just like hockey players, there's a certain age where you you, you can't keep up with everyone else. It's just mm -hmm. like us. Everyone is going to get to that that stage. Like I can't do 60 hour weeks, you know, at some point, right? So I got to have a strategy of them being the coach where maybe I get to put in a little less time and not so much boots on the ground. And then eventually, what you want to get up to is the owner, right? Get in the press box, the owner's box, who's there overseeing the whole operation. And you know, with your system, you have all those different levels that you can work towards and have some sort of exit strategy so that as you can't just keep grinding it out week after week, month after month, year after year, it's like, okay, this is the plan. I'm going to get to the press box. I'm going to have something that's an actual business. That's a sellable asset that I can put less and less time in, but still it just is just working and the wheels are all spinning and, and everything's going. Does that make sense? Why do you think we have so many 70 and 80 year old realtors running around? You think they're selling real estate because they want to in their 70s and 80s? No, they're doing it because they have to, because they've never been able to make enough income as a real estate agent to put enough away into their retirement fund. So a good thing for everyone to think about is look at your age right now. Okay, whatever your age is, write it down. And then ask yourself, well, how many more years do I want to sell real estate? Let's say you're, I don't know, you're 55. You say, I want to retire at 65. Well, that's 10 years. Okay, well, if you retire at 65, you might live to 95. You got to go for 30 years from 65 to 95 with no money. So how much money would you need to be able to retire at 65? Like what do you got right now at age 55? How much more do you need to make in the next 10 years from age 55 to 65 so you can coast? Because you're going to have no income for 30 years. Nobody does that math. And so what happens is uh, they spend it as fast as they make it. They don't make near enough to be able to suck any way in a retirement fund. And there is no exit strategy. That's the answer to your question, Mike. What's your exit strategy for most realtors? They ain't got one. They just keep working and working and working and working, even though they're tired. Um, now, we teach you how to change that. We teach you how to move up the ladder, 
make a lot of money as a solo agent, then leverage yourself with uh, first some nice systems to make you very profitable as a solo agent, and then eventually create enough business, enough overflow that you could make a promise to another agent like I did, which is, hey, if you come and partner up with me, um, you'll make way more money than what you're making now because I've got all this overflow business that I can't handle. And then increase the overflow so even the one person you hire, they can't even do it. I remember she walked into my office at about 24 months, hair all over the place. She's like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. So we hired another one. We had another one. We kept ramping up the marketing. Pretty soon, I had eight licensed agents that were working with all the buyers and sellers, so I didn't have to. Now, um, like Mike, I was able to move from Canada to Florida and live on an island and do that for four years. Um, the crazy part was, you know, the first year that I lived in Florida, I was still named the number one Remax agent in the world. I wasn't even in the city for the whole year, right? So um, that's the kind of success. Now, you can be skeptical or whatever, but my track record is very public. It's very well documented, right? So you want to learn more about how to do this. Now, let's go back to Mike here. We're going to get into some more marketing, but Mike, give us the areas you serve and give us your contact information because I do want those of you that are interested, I want you to reach out to Mike. I want you to have a conversation. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, what areas do you work in Tennessee and California? And then how? what's the best way for realtors to reach you? Sure, so um, you can see my last name is pretty unique. It's S-Z like Sam, Z like Zebra, A-K-O-S. So S-Z-A-K-O-S. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, social media, pretty easy to track me down. Or you can email me at michael at team Seikos, just T-E-A-M, Seikos.com. And I will get that. So if you're interested in California or Tennessee, that'll come directly to me. Uh, or like I said, you can message me through uh, any uh, Instagram, Facebook, or anything like that. I serve Ventura County, uh, primarily in California, which is just north of Los Angeles. And then I serve uh, all of Middle Tennessee. So it's from the Alabama border all the way up to Kentucky, coming straight through Nashville here in Tennessee. So happy to have conversations, talk to you about any of these things, give you more information about how these programs work. Uh, like I said, have an open mindset of how can these things been, be done, not they can't be done, and uh, and we'll have a great conversation. Give us a couple more examples of some of the unique selling propositions that may appear less scary for our uh, for our viewers. Sure. So, so one that's coming back into play now because uh, a lot of markets are stalling, prices are coming down a little bit. Um, you are seeing more and more price reductions. Is uh, your home sold? guaranteed at 100% of market value or we'll pay the difference, right? So you're not buying the house. You're not saying you're going to buy the house, but you're saying I'll pay the difference if it doesn't sell for the market value. Now, I know what people are thinking. That scares me. What if it sells for 50, 100,000 less than what you're saying, right? But there's obviously a stopgap there uh, where it's typically one or 2% of the difference that you'll make up. Right. Obviously, you're not going to go more than what your entitled, your entire commission would be. Right. So um, again, that guarantee would be, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what sets us apart from the other agents is rather than just giving you a totally unrealistic price that you get your listing, we tell you the truth of what your house is actually worth. In fact, when we give you a price, we guarantee uh, that your home will sell at this market value. We're saying the house is worth X. We guarantee it's going to sell at this price or more. And if you end up selling it for less than market value, okay, uh, then that's on us. And we'll reduce our commission by as much as our full commission upon the successful sale. So you would only be um, sacrificing, giving up on part of your commission or your full commission upon successful sale. So you're not actually losing money out of pocket. So, you know, if your commission was $15,000, and the home sold for twenty or thirty thousand dollars under the most you'd be out would be your full commission. You put parameters on it. Now, some of this is not going to make make sense to you. I mean, Mike's studied under me for twelve years, okay. And the first time Mike heard all of this, he felt the same way as you. Uh, this is very different. Um, you know, how does it work? But he had a very different attitude than most people. He had a very positive attitude towards it. He didn't know how it all worked. Sure, he had his, uh, you know, a fair degree of questions and maybe some skepticism, which is natural, right? I mean, you're smart to be skeptical. There's a lot of people giving out really bad advice today. 
Uh, but the thing about myself and everyone I interview and all of my coaches is they all successfully sell real estate. Where today, a lot of the gurus, and you should really do your research, guys. Do you know that many of the coaches out there today have never had a real estate license? If they did, yeah, they never had a buyer in the car. They never presented an offer. They didn't do any of the things they tell you about. Uh, forget about being successful. They didn't even sell real estate. And then there's a lot of failed real estate agents, right? Uh, that uh, they tried that, you know, uh, what do they say? Those that uh, can do and those that can't teach. And, and so um, uh, for 15 years, I did both. I was the top agent in the world for Remax and I was coaching and training thousands of real estate agents. I've had over 30,000 agents through the system. So um, you're hearing from doers. Okay. So if you reach out to Mike, just know this guy's the real deal. He actually does everything that he's talking about. And that's why he'd be able to answer all your questions. Uh, it's not theory, not something he heard about. It's what he does all day. It's what he, what he does all day long. Um, so we coach you up on three different ways to set yourself apart. The first way are these performance guarantees that we talked about today. Okay, so the guaranteed sale or we'll sell your home for X amount of dollars or we'll pay you X amount or deduct this amount from our commission. Um, we have guarantees for buyers. A, gar a similar guarantee for a buyer is, hey, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, if you work with us, we guarantee to say, save you, let's say $5,000 off of any home you purchase using our services. And if we fail to save you at least $5,000, we'll deduct $1,000 uh, from our commission on closing. These are performance guarantees. Okay, the next uh, type of unique selling proposition, okay, category number two, would be unique services. Uh, so we have unique services that only we offer in the marketplace that no other agent offers. An example of that would be our buyers and waiting program. So when Mike meets with a seller, Instead of saying, hey, if you list with me, here's all the things I would do to try to sell your home or find a buyer, uh, Mike can already come to the appointment with dozens or hundreds of buyers he already has in his database. In other words, he already has the buyer. If you were selling your home, you felt confident that your agent or the, the, the agent you're meeting with actually had a buyer for your home already, that's pretty attractive. So we've got all these unique services that we offer. And then the third category is when you have an overflow of buyers and sellers, you have the luxury of choice. So you can pick and choose to work with the most motivated, the most sincere, and the most ready to act buyers and sellers. Okay. In other words, you don't need to work with someone that's a jerk, someone that's unqualified, someone that's not going to listen to you. They want to overprice their home. They're not that motivated. They lie to you or whatever. You know what? That's what makes real estate a drag is working with people like that. I think we'd all agree the opposite is true. When you're working with a great client, someone that respects you, uh, they ask your advice, uh, you do a good job for them, they run around town, they send you all kinds of referrals, they're a joy to work with. And those are the days you come home from work and you say, honey, I love real estate. So we want to genetically engineer your business so you attract those types of people and that you've got so many clients coming in that anyone that's a bit of a jerk, anyone that's um, not qualified, not motivated, anyone that's going to fight you all the way through the process gets eliminated. This is how you get rich in real estate, by attracting great clients. So we teach you how to do that. Now, because you have these great clients who love you, who do what you advise them to do, what happens is your statistics improve, right? If they list their house at the right price, it's going to sell pretty close to the asking price. And the next thing you can do is you can say, you know, I sold uh, 58 houses last year and they averaged 99% uh, of the asking price, but the real estate board average in our city the homes only sell for 95%. Therefore, when you list with me, our listings sell for 3% more. You guys get the point. Okay. Our homes sell in half the days in the market, or uh, in 98% of the homes I list sell and close with the real estate board average. Only 42% of the homes that got listed in the last six months ended up actually selling and closing. So these are all unique ways uh, that you would be uh, marketing yourself to attract clients and convert clients and uh, present to them. When all that works, uh, the next thing we do is, okay, what are you going to do about it? You got this successful business. You can't, you know, keep a lid on it yourself. So then you got to learn how to recruit, hire, train, and manage. And there's a lear learning curve with that as well, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. There's a whole bunch that goes into that. 
Um, I just had a thought when you were when you were kind of mentioning what you were just talking about and kind of the whole some of the things we've talked about in the past. Now, there might be some people listening right now who like don't want any of this stuff. Right. They're like, I don't want to go to Ireland. I don't want to start another business in another state. I don't want to do all these things. I don't want to become the guy in the press box, the, the ownership level. Like I love selling houses. I love getting my hands dirty, being in boots in the trenches and, and selling houses. And it's like you can do that, too. Like what you just touched on. How would you like as many clients of exactly the people you want to work with? knocking ringing you up on the phone every single day right like that's like you can still do that if that's what you want that's great and something that i did love about you and it really attracted to me to you when when i first met you was you still were selling houses and that's a big difference from a lot of the other people out there who are coaching uh real estate right and i still do that to this day too i still sell houses because i enjoy it i like the interaction i like changing people's lives i like seeing like what we actually are doing as a business to change people's lives but i get to do that by choice, right? And pick and choose who I want to go work with and who I don't want to work with. So even if you don't want to have this massive team or this massive business or do some of the things we've talked about, you know, uh, come talk to me. I can help you point you in the right direction just to do what you want to do, what your goals are, right? Or talk to Craig and his team. Uh, they can point you in the right direction to, to do whatever you want to achieve in life. And that's, that's the greatest thing is, you know, you open up your big seminars of your heart's desire, right? I mean, Craig's true passion in life is helping people achieve their heart's desire, not his heart's desire, but their heart's desire. Like, what do you really want out of life? And, you know, my life is completely different because I met you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for Mike, uh, that Mike. Uh, yeah. But I want you to look at real estate as a tool and it's yeah. a tool that can make your life worse and consume your life and close out all the light. Uh, or we can use real estate as a tool to help you get more life, more more relationships, more time with the people you really care about. Um, so this is what we're going to focus on is what do you want and how do we build a business to get you there? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mike, what I love about selling, and this never got old, is I, I even liked being in competition. You know, I go out there and I, you know, they'd be interviewing three realtors, but oh, yeah. the the thrill of getting the listing at the right price, not overpricing, but getting that listing, beating up the other agents and getting that listing at the right price and probably at a higher commission rate than the other agents and getting it for the right length of time and getting it signed. And as a salesperson, you love that feeling. Um, you know, you walk out of the house, maybe you, you turn the corner over by the garage, you give yourself a fist pump. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's just the thrill of sales that I love. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is for those of you that partner up with Mike, this is what this thing looks like. You literally would not do anything except for go on listing appointments or buyer appointments, period. Mike pays for all the marketing and advertising. He's an expert. He's been with me for 12 years. You don't have to worry about learning all this stuff. If you partner up with Mike, he does all the marketing. He doesn't give you leads. He gives you actual listing appointments and buyer appointments. Let me repeat it again. This is not like most brokerage. Oh, we'll give you, you know, a bunch of Zillow leads to call or whatever. No, no. We're giving you actual appointments. These are qualified, motivated listing appointments and buyer appointments. You would have one job, which is you go out to the appointments and you use the Craig Proctor listing presentation. Now, Mike's got two jobs. Okay. One job is producing those listing appointments and buyer appointments for you. Lots of them. Okay. As many as you want. Job number two for Mike is to be your mentor and coach and train you on how to the best approach when you're meeting with the buyers and sellers, the presentations. He spends an enormous amount of time coaching you, unlike any other broker around. I know every brokerage promises that, right? Oh, we'll give you leads. You don't want leads. Guys, do you want leads? How many of you uh, understand people are not picking up the phone right now? You're calling these leads. You have to make 100 phone calls to get four people to pick up the phone. And they're like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do that. Somebody was playing with my phone. Those are not leads. Now, how much money could you make if this was true? Be as skeptical as you want, but just hang with me for a minute. If this was the straight truth, that all you had to do was tell Mike every week, uh, okay, here's when I'm going to open my day timer. I don't want to work Thursday night. Mike could say, cool, yeah, go be with your family. But whenever you open your, your um, calendar, be careful because Mike's going to fill the thing, okay? Now, 
your job is you got to come back with the listing or the buyer contract signed. If you come back with a story about, well, you know what, um, they really liked me, but no, no, we we coach you up on how to be super effective. And that doesn't mean you're going to get every one of them, but that's our goal. So what happens is you're working way less hours because here's what you're not doing. You're not messing around, cold calling, prospecting, sitting in open houses, uh, wasting your money on Zillow or realtor leads or whatever you're doing with lead generation. You don't got to be bothered with that anymore. Mike takes care of that. Now, once the house is listed, you're you're good. You just uh, bring the uh, you just send the uh, listing into the office. They're going to broker load it for you. Somebody else is going to bang the sign on the lawn. Somebody else is going to take the pictures of the house. Somebody else is going to make the feature sheet. Somebody else is going to install the key box. You are done. Okay. All you have to do is uh, take care of the buyer and seller and get this through, through closing. So how much money could you make if the only thing that you did was witness signatures? A lot of money. And that's why the agents that worked with me worked with me for 20, 25 years because they're all making three, four hundred thousand dollars net in their pocket. Net in their pocket. They're they weren't paying for anything. I was paying for it all. Now, my number one agent, her name was Lindy. She was with me for 20 years, and she made north of three hundred thousand dollars every single year. Some years over four hundred thousand. Well, let's just say three hundred thousand for 20 years. Three hundred thousand dollars times 20 years means she made six million dollars working with me as a buyer agent in her pocket, in her jeans, no expenses. Of course, that also means, if you think about this, she made me $6 million. Now, I had eight agents like her making me $6 million. And so um, if you're looking for a good place, if you're really good at this, you can stay for a long, long time, and you could focus on just the part you love, which is working with buyers and sellers, let Mike take care of the rest. That's the opportunity. Now, some of you might want to be the next Mike. Some of you are like, well, uh, you know what? I'm not in Tennessee. I'm, I'm not in uh, Mike's marketplace. Um, I want to learn how to do this. Like Mike said, uh, you decide how big you want it. Maybe you want to go from 20 transactions to 50, but do it easier in a better way. Maybe you're like Mike. Maybe you want to take on the world. Maybe you want to open in multiple cities and go live in Ireland for a year. It's up to you. I have uh, Craig Proctor members, Mike knows them. Some of them make over a million dollars in commissions every month. We get hundreds and hundreds of making over a million dollars a year, but we have Craig Proctor members that make over a uh, million dollars every in GCI every single month. So you can make it as big, as small as you want. Most agents that start with me come from humble beginnings. Uh, some of my biggest superstars, some of the ones making a million dollars a month, um, we're in bad financial situations. Some of them were bankrupt. Um, you know, so it's really not where you are right now that matters. It's where you want to go and having the right attitude. So I want to thank everybody for watching this today. Let us know in the comments whether you found this extremely helpful. Okay, and thank Mike. Mike didn't need to be here today. He's already doing fantastic. He came here to share his story. Uh, and if you are in Google him, First of all, you should Google him. Then go Google yourself. You're going to see a big difference. Understand the first step that the buyers and sellers take today, right, is they Google the realtors. It used to be, well, if I decide, want to decide what agent I should use, well, I guess I'll, I'll call a bunch on the phone and I'll have them come over and, and uh, pitch me at my kitchen table. Nope, it's not how it's done. Think about when you want to buy something, a car, even when you want to go out to dinner, you've never been to the restaurant before, you Google it. So how you show up on Google, how you show up online is vitally important. Let us coach you up on this so um, you can start uh, down this pathway of having the business you really want, a business that serves your life and your family's life. Uh, Mike, any final thoughts before we wrap up our interview today? No, I just appreciate the opportunity to... Uh... To give back to the community, let people know kind of my journey. Uh, hopefully, it inspires people. And uh, like I said, if you're if you're interested in talking, I'd be happy to talk to you. There's no pressure. I'm not going to hard sell you or anything like that. If I can answer any questions, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, I just want to pass forward all the knowledge I've learned over the over the past 12 years being around you, Craig. And I'll end with this. My favorite quote of all time is Henry Ford's: "Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right." Absolutely. Great quote and a great way to end our interview today. 
Uh, let us know uh, the comments today. Uh, if you found this incredibly helpful, let us know. You can also share uh, this interview with any other realtor you know that you think this would help them. Maybe share it with your broker. Your broker wants to help all the other agents. But I'm real estate coach Craig Proctor. You can find me at craigproctor.com. Um, this interview, you're going to find all over social media. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on Instagram. It's going to be on YouTube. It's all over the place. We teach you how to do the same thing too. Make great online presentations and, uh, and get the word out on what makes you unique, what makes you different, what makes you better. So that's what today was all about. Uh, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for tuning in today, and we'll see you again next time. And Mike, uh, thanks again for doing the interview. Thank you, of course. Thanks, everyone. This is Real Estate Coach Craig Proctor. We'll see you next time. Hi, this is Craig Proctor. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed that video. And listen, I've got a lot more information for you to help you grow your real estate business. You see, several times a week, I record new videos and I load them onto this YouTube channel. What I'd like you to do if you'd like to access them are two important things, and both are totally free. Number one is I'd like you to subscribe to this channel. You're gonna see a little subscribe button for you to click on. And if you don't already have an account with YouTube, it's free for you to set it up. It's really easy, it's free, but you've got to subscribe to this channel. And the most important thing is to ring the little bell right next to the subscribe button. And that's gonna let you know every time I load new money-making videos to help you grow your real estate business. So make sure you subscribe right now, you ring the little bell, and we'll see you on the next video.